relate with the uh, with our co4 and co4 and uh, co4 if i'm not mistaken okay uh, which is related to uh, semi-automatic and uh, automatic welding and also the prevention of uh, weld defect so we are going to look into these two uh, subtopic for today okay uh, as i already uh, brief uh, to you over and over again uh, for each uh, uh, lecture session in the very beginning of each, each lecture session okay this topic uh, related to the quality control process eh, which is a uh, touch a bit on uh, quality control uh, in the designing uh, phase or designing stage and also quality control uh, after the welding process okay so today we are going to look into uh, how we uh, we uh, make sure uh, the quality of a welded product uh, by uh, by uh, look into the precaution and also maintaining the semi-automatic and automatic welding process and also uh, how to prevent uh, we, we are get to know uh, each of the weld defect that commonly occur uh, in in a welding process and also uh, how to prevent it so let's look into uh, the first subtopic first, okay, uh, which is related to the semi-automatic and automatic welding. Uh, so we are first going to look into the precaution for semi-automatic welding and precaution uh, that need to be taken for automatic welding. All of this is, uh, all of this precaution is taken to uh, make sure the process is uh, uh, undergone or... or or being done eh, with the optimum uh, condition eh, in order to assure the quality of the welded product and last topic for this sub uh, chapter is a uh, treatment and maintenance of the welding equipment so uh, if you look into the semi-automatic welding eh, what, what you have been um, uh, explain uh, previously in the previous CO eh, related to the MIG, TIG and so forth uh, all of all of those things is uh, uh, semi-automatic welding eh, MIG eh, or M MAG okay so uh, the precaution that need to be taken here as you see from the listed uh, fact here okay uh, in which the protection from wind is necessary during welding eh? Uh, this is in order to make sure the environment is uh, really under control eh? so that uh, as you can yeah as you remember previously uh, in the previous topic it have been explained that the the gas from environment for example uh, was able to uh, affect Eh, the the well quality eh. nanti kalau apa nama rea re reaction between um, uh, gas from environment kalau kita tak ada shielding gas eh, ataupun shielding gas is not enough semua tu akan affect well quality lah and that's why uh, the protection from wind is necessary during welding this is more related to uh, to achieve the optimum condition during the process Okay, and then the second point here, as you can see, the welding roof should be cleaned carefully. Okay, ni ini semua nak nak mengelakkan ni lah uh, berlakunya uh, faktor luaran eh, yang menyebabkan uh, timbulnya defect. Eh. And then a welding condition should be appropriate. Eh. The welding torch should be operated smoothly and kept at an adequate high and angle to obtain stable arc, good penetration and good appearance of weld bed. Okay, uh, abrupt welding of the conduit cable should be avoided to maintain the smooth wire feeding. Eh? Uh, that's why, bila kita tengok pada wire feeding ni, that's why MIG is also called semi-automatic welding. It is not like uh, the one that we use rod. Eh? Maknanya kita yang control tangan, kita yang control jarak uh, between uh, deposited metal from the electrode to the uh, weld pool kan. Uh, so untuk yang uh, apa nama MIG ni uh, wire feeder tu dia dia uh, apa nama automatic tapi kita still kena control dengan tangan that's why we call it semi automatic okay so uh, 
perkara ni juga penting lah in order to maintain smooth wire feeding ni because uh, uh, and uh, any disturbance on uh, wire feeding kot wire tersangkut ataupun wire bengkok dan sebagainya akan mengakibatkan berlakunya uh, ni lah uh, uncertainties during process uh, which uh, lead to the formation of defect. Okay, so a good mesh between the contact tips opening and wire diameter is important for smooth wire feeding and ensuring good electric contact. Uh, this more related to good uh, or smooth wire feeding lah. And proper training and qualification of all welders are in, uh, all welders involved are necessary. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the list of uh, some of the precaution, uh, uh, some of the important precaution that is needed for semi-automatic welding. Now let's look into the uh, precaution for automatic welding. Eh. Uh, ni yang uh, bezanya semi-automatic ni dia tak ada guna uh, apa nama ni operator langsung. Eh. Uh, all of those uh, machinery is operated by a robot eh, using robotic control system and so forth. Okay, so precaution for unmanned, eh, uh, tak gunakan tenaga manusia automatic welding such as robot welding uh, as follows. Okay, accurate part and accurate assembly work as well as welding groove accuracy are required. Eh? And then use of adequate combination of shielding gas wire to reduce uh, sputter is necessarily uh, necessary. Okay, and then the choice of welding equipment is also important. A SIM tracking device is necessary for welding equipment for large scale structures. SIM tracking device ni more like uh, online monitoring system lah. Yeah. And then automatic nozzle cleaners, automatic wire and cutter and automatic tips changer are desirable. Nah, ni sebab semua uh, tidak dikontrol oleh manusia. Jadi robot ni apa yang kita setting tu macam tu lah dia buat. That's why kita kena uh, make sure everything is uh, set in a good condition before we start the process. Okay. Uh, and then treatment and maintenance of welding equipment. Uh, as you can see all is related to cleaning and check eh, uh, whether it is uh, periodically checked or or, uh, or preventive or maintaining uh, check ha, macam dia dia ada maintenance ni kita ada preventive uh, corrective ha, dia ada dua dua peringkat lah ha. so kalau kita tengok lebih kepada cleaning and check uh, semua semua uh, important component lah such as wire feeding rollers pressure rollers eh, conduit cables okay contact tips and notch uh, sorry, torch nozzles and and also the shield gas passage eh, and passage eh, and uh, electric cable. Semua komponen-komponen ni kalau uh, you all tengok memang penting lah eh, dalam proses welding. Uh, so, uh, benda ni lebih kepada common sense lah. Okay. Uh, and a treatment and maintenance of uh, welding equipment ni all fell under ISO lah yang pernah kita apa belajar sebelum ni. Okay. Uh, uh, now let's look into uh, another subtopic which is a uh, prevention of well defect uh, under this subtopic uh, you are going to look into well defects and uh, their influence okay you get to know what what type of defect okay in this subtopic eh? you will get to know what type of defect which is commonly occur eh, during uh, welding process and how it is influencing uh, uh, the weld product eh, in term of its mechanical properties and also uh, other factor lah, uh, other factor lah eh. and then uh, we are going to look into how to prevent eh, the weld defect eh, such as a prevention of cold cracks, hot crack, lamin laminar tears, porosity, slack inclusion, lack of fusion, incomplete penetration and also undercut uh, banyak lagi type of uh, defect tapi kita tengok kepada yang uh, commonly occur dan uh, lebih uh, kita katakan severe eh? uh, maksudnya uh, lebih bahaya lah sekiranya kita biarkan eh? uh, um, defect ni uh, terus berada dalam uh, weld component kita and then we are going to look into defect in our our Alternative uh, stainless steel, eh, such as a uh, hot crack and green boundary precipitation of a chromium carbide. Uh, kenapa kita tengok uh, dalam satu subtopik yang eh, kita tengok special sangat eh, alternative uh, stainless steel ni? 
Sebab kalau kita tengok uh, Austenitic stainless steel ni Dia sifat dia berbeza dengan steel-steel yang lain Di mana uh, ianya uh, Kita katakan sebagai non-magnetic eh? Kalau kita lekat magnet tu tak lekat lah maksudnya uh, Dia pun punya sifat-sifat yang unik uh, uh, Untuk kita uh, apply eh, dalam dalam komponen-komponen uh, Atau part-part tertentu Ha, sebab dia ada, ada sifat unik tapi ianya juga ada sifat yang uh, ada kelemahan yang ketara ha, that's why kita nak tengok lah eh. so uh, this is the well defect and their influence okay as you can see point by point here uh, a well joint must pose uh, uh, poses uh, various qualities uh, according to the required load type of joint or importance of the structure ha, ni yang pernah saya terangkan sebelum-sebelum ni uh, kita ada banyak uh, apa nama ni pilihan eh, daripada sudut uh, welding teknologi sendiri kita nak weld satu-satu komponen kita kita boleh pilih proses uh, welding yang mana kita nak MIG, TIG uh, apa nama ni aa uh, apa uh, banyak lagi lah proses-proses uh, welding yang kita boleh pilih laser for example kan laser welding uh, tapi ianya bergantung kepada apa uh, ke, uh, how how simple the process is because uh, uh, the simplicity is uh, related to the uh, cost eh uh, the operation cost and then um, apa lagi uh, apa nama ni Kalau uh, say that kita just look into simplicity punya factor, okay, kita mungkin uh, boleh choose uh, satu uh, welding method and then uh, kita tengok pula kelemahan dia. Eh, uh, apa yang akan berlaku kepada welded joint uh, kalau kita nak guna komponen tu untuk aplikasi otomotif for example. Uh, mungkin proses ni hanya sesuai untuk uh, komponen yang tidak melibatkan load yang besar for example so, tu semua tu semua uh, 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 how we decide lah uh, pendekatan yang berbeza untuk setiap uh, well joint tu eh so a poor work kalau kita tengok uh, next uh, point here poor workmanship or defect affect those qualities okay uh, uh, and then harmful defect must be removed and repaired using correct manner according to repair procedure specification. Okay, the location to be repaired and detail of repair procedure must be well studied and decided in advance. When serious defects such as crack are located, the cause of the defect must be investigated and countermeasures implemented to prevent recurrence. And then high degree of technical knowledge and experience is required to study and decide how to repair the defects. Okay. High skill, uh, high degree of skill is required to repair them, and many cases of trouble or damage are due to incorrect uh, repair. So kita boleh simpulkan daripada uh, point by point ni uh, setiap apa welded uh, joint ataupun uh, well, welded component tu kita design berbeza mengikut aplikasi yang berbeza eh. kita design tu maksudnya bukan setakat design uh, komponen tu sendiri tapi design proses tu kita nak guna proses uh, welding yang mana satu ok uh, apa nama elektrod yang mana satu kita nak decide filler yang mana satu for example kan uh, jadi uh, Semua tu uh, akan uh, efek quality. Eh. Bila dia efek quality, uh, kalau quality tu, uh, kalau kita buat assessment, dia uh, dia tidak harmful, tak apalah. Tapi kalau harmful, kita mungkin kena buat apa nama repair uh, instead of reject terus komponen tu. Bergantung juga kepada size of the component or structure. Uh, and then... Uh, Untuk repair kita kena uh, follow prosedur tertentu dan uh, perlu high degree of skill lah uh, bagi bagi operator tu untuk untuk uh, lakukan uh, repair welding ni. Uh, so nampak uh, betapa seriusnya perkara yang melibatkan uh, weld defect ni. Okay. So the, ni, this is example of a weld defect that commonly occur uh, which is lack of penetration. Uh, Kita ada banyak jenis lack, lack of penetration. Crack pun kita ada beberapa jenis. Blow hole for example. Ada beberapa jenis juga. Lack of fusion juga banyak. Okay. 
lack of inclu inclusion, eh, hollow bed, burn through, meltdown, undercut, overlap and so forth. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, ada yang uh, hanya uh, satu jenis dan ada uh, beberapa jenis uh, uh, defect yang di bawahnya ada ada beberapa subkategori lah. Okay. So, to prevent the well defect, eh, this is general out item, eh, which is to, to choose a suitable base metal and welding process. Okay. Uh, ni uh, melibatkan design tadi lah. And then suitable well be welding consumable and need to be selected. Okay. And then choose a suitable wel welding position and type of groove. Eh. Use operation technique such as retract strut technique. Okay. To prevent defect. Okay. Confirm adequate height and width of weld bed. Uh, consider tech welding and location, performance and control uh, of uh, gogging. Okay, training and uh, manning of welders and related operator. Consideration of work circumstances. Okay, and also the treatment to ensure that trouble does not occur at the next work stage. Ha, ni kalau uh, kita simpulkan ke semua point-point ni dia lebih melibatkan macam mana kita merancang kerja ketika tu. Ha, dia melibatkan cara kita design komponen, cara kita design the process and also uh, how we make sure uh, our uh, our welders are competent. Ha, kan? Ha. So benda-benda tu melibatkan tiga perkara penting ni lah. Um. And then... Uh, uh this is a, a example eh, of how we could prevent the cold crack eh? uh, one of the uh, well defect that commonly occur uh, during the welding process is a cold crack eh uh, kalau kau tengok cold crack ni ni contoh dia dalam gambar ni eh cold crack eh uh, which is uh, can be uh, divided into root crack two crack okay under bed crack eh transverse crack okey ah uh, yang ketiga uh, apa ketiga-tiga ni banyak berlaku di heat affected zone lah uh, ataupun mm uh, uh, sempadan eh antara base metal dan juga uh, fusion zone okey and then transverse crack ni biasa berlaku dalam uh, uh, ni lah apa nama fusion zone lah uh, so uh, kalau kita tengok di sini disimpulkan bahawa cold crack can be prevented by controlling the chemical composition okay cooling rate uh, hydrogen content post heating uh, or intensity of uh, restraint uh, this is the among the the simplest thing to do to uh, avoid uh, cold crack okay uh, so kalau kita tengok uh, berkaitan dengan com chemical composition ni tadi okay Kalau kita tengok base metal with low uh, carbon equivalent uh, and low uh, PCM index uh, which is index of steel plate uh, cold crack sensitivity should be used lah. Okay. Uh, so kita apa cuba elakkan high carbon punya uh, uh, apa namanya alloy uh, dan juga uh, ada certain alloy tu dia dah bagi bacaan PCM dia lah. Uh, bacaan PCM dia sepatutnya rendah lah. Eh, untuk kita hmm, apa nama elakkan cuba elakkan tapi ada ada case dalam design memang kita terpaksa uh, untuk choose eh, this kind of alloy so so we have to look into another uh, way eh, to to prevent the cold crack lah to minimize eh, bukan prevent sebenarnya dia lebih kepada uh, minimize eh. Uh, so, kalau kita tengok another one is a cooling rate. Eh? The cooling time from, uh, kalau kita tengok di sini, cooling time eh, from 800 uh, degrees Celsius, uh, 500 to 800 degrees Celsius govern microstructure which affect elongation and toughness of the uh, heat affected zone. Eh? The amount of a diffusible hydrogen is also determined by cooling time uh, from the melting point to uh, 100 degrees Celsius. A large heat input eh, and preheating can be used to uh, extend eh, the cooling time. Eh. Uh, the attention should be paid to the welding of thick plate and short uh, welding such as tack welding or jig welding due to the short cooling time generally involved. 
So ni berkaitan uh, dengan uh, ni lah cooling rate lah. Apa yang cuba kita elakkan sebenarnya berlaku rapid cooling. Eh, bila terlalu quick cooling ni uh, apa uh, cooling ni berlaku dalam uh, kadar yang terlalu pantas so crack uh, cool crack akan berlaku. And then uh, if we look uh, into another factor, uh, we should also uh, control the initial amount of this diffusible hydrogen eh, in order to prevent the cold crack. Okay, uh, so kita boleh tengoklah di sini uh, macam mana hydrogen tu terhasil eh, ketika proses. Okay, uh, so macam mana uh, kita nak elakkan ianya daripada berlaku. Okay. And then uh, another factor that we could uh, or another way uh, that we could uh, take uh, in order to prevent the cold crack is a post heating. Okay. Eh? So maksudnya post heating ni kita lakukan selepas welding tu lah. Selepas welding kita lakukan post heating eh? uh, in order to uh, discharge eh, the diffusible hydrogen eh? and uh, can help to prevent cold cracking lah dalam case ni. Okay, post heating uh, biasanya dekat uh, antara 500 hingga 650 darjah Celsius eh, only for a short time eh, while lower temperature needs more time. Okay, so uh, biasanya uh, proses eh, pada suhu gini uh, antara 500 hingga 600 eh, proses welding ni biasanya post heating kita buat sekejap sajalah eh. Uh, untuk apa uh, welding dengan uh, temperature yang lebih rendah daripada ni uh, kita perlukan masa yang lebih panjang lah. Eh, and then for example post, uh, ni ni apa nama uh, uh, contoh dia lah eh. Post heating of uh, 250 to 350 should be done 30 minutes uh, to 1 hour. Uh, kalau kalau apa ya uh, Uh, suhunya lebih besar maksudnya duration dia lebih rendah lah eh so another way eh to prevent the cold crack is uh, to control the intensity of restraint uh, okay the intensity of restraint must correspond to the stage of a structure thickness of plate and a welding sequence and affect cold cracking Okay. Effort should be made to keep the intensity of restraint small by good design and work performance. Okay, and then the influence of well groove to the intensity of restraint is large, and the degree of influence eh, from large to small uh, for, uh, is T joint, eh, single bevel or K, K groove, eh, single bevel as well. Okay, single V partial penetration and also X groove. Eh. When welding uh, when welding must be performed under large restraint, eh, special consideration for electrodes, welding condition, preheating and post heating are required. Okay. So kalau kita tengok pada sini lebih kepada uh, uh, again eh, uh, kadang-kadang dalam satu-satu proses tu uh, kita tak boleh nak elakkan perkara-perkara uh, lain dan mungkin di sini uh, antara satu faktor yang kita boleh buat which is controlling the intensity of restraint uh, by uh, by uh, planning eh, in design phase eh. planning uh, design and also uh, planning the work performance uh, uh, planning the, the 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 process itself uh, sorry work performance lah apa uh, process itself eh, in order to get the the better work performance lah in order to prevent the cold crack okay so uh, if you look into another type of crack which is a uh, uh, hot cracking or solidification crack eh uh, kalau kita tengok dia biasanya macam ni lah contoh dia eh uh, so to prevent this uh, uh, hot cracking eh uh, We need a proper selection of a chemical composition and the metallurgical structure of the material. Eh? Another point is uh, we should use uh, appropriate welding parameters and also suitable size of uh, suitable size and type of welding groove. Eh? Yang ni melibatkan design, yang ni melibatkan design process, 
uh, yang ni meribatkan uh, design juga uh, design component to selection of uh, material so kalau kita tengok tiga perkara penting ni lah untuk mengelakkan uh, hot cracking daripada berlaku Uh, so uh, kalau kita tengok di sini uh, the following precaution are required for the material and welding procedure which may experience the heat crack eh? kalau kita tengok apa itu heat crack uh, which is the crack that usually occur at weld to in the high strength steel or low alloy steel after post weld heat treatment operation ok So, uh, precaution uh, that required is to smooth the finishing of the toe area, minimize the thermal stress during heating and cooling, and also avoid residual stress and stress concentration. Uh, and then, uh, let's look into uh, another type of crack, which is lamellar tears. Okay. Lamellar tears is usually occur in T-joint or cruciform uh, joint, uh, which heavy plate thickness under the high restraint condition eh? uh, elongated inclusion such as uh, manganese and sulfur okay and through thickness z direction property in the material are strongly affected in the tendency of lamellar tears and the best way to prevent lamellar tears is to use an anti lamellar tears uh, z steel but this is a little expensive okay? the second best way is to minimize Uh, the the second best way to minimize the restraint is to minimize the restraint force eh? instead of kita guna uh, anti lamellar tear z steel okay kita boleh juga minimize restraint force perpendicular to the direction of the main structural member and the application of proper welding and deposition sequence eh, will reduce residual stress where a lamellar tear may occur Eh, local use of mild well bed is also useful prevention method reduce of diffusible hydrogen is effective to prevent uh, this type of uh, defect as well okay so this is the example of how uh, we improve uh, uh, the design uh, or the, uh, we improve the welding plan okay in order to Uh, prevent eh, the lamellar tears eh. welding plan tu maksud saya lebih kepada kalau macam ni lebih kepada uh, deposition plan planning tu lah eh. you, nak, you nak weld bahagian mana instead of bahagian mana and then uh, deposition sequence pun penting juga uh, kat mana dulu nak weld uh, kemudian baru buat kat mana dulu uh, tu untuk prevent lamellar tears lah ok And then uh, let's look into another type of uh, well defect which is porosity, okay. So porosity ni berlaku uh, apabila terdapat uh, bubble trap eh, uh, uh, underneath the uh, fusion zone. Eh. Biasanya biasanya bubble trap ni sama ada dekat dekat di dasar, di tengah ataupun uh, di, di hampir-hampir dengan permukaan lah. Eh. Ha, kalau kita tengok di, di, di atas permukaan pun ada eh, isolated surface porosity. Ha, ni biasa yang underneath the uh, fusion zone, uh, uh, the only way that we could uh, monitor this type of uh, defect is by uh, radiographic technique. Okay, kita scan dia guna X-ray ke sebagainya untuk kita tengok lah. Okay, because kita tak boleh nampak dari permukaan. Okay. Okay, to, to prevent this type of uh, well defect, okay, we should remove all dust, rust, moisture, oil and paint from the welding groove. Uh, sebab bila ada uh, benda sing ni uh, akan berlaku ketidakstabilan lah uh, semasa deposition proses uh, dan menyebabkan uh, berlakunya uh, udara terperangkap eh, uh, di dalam uh, molten pool uh, sewaktu Uh, dia belum solidify ok and then control drying and storing of welding consumable ok keep up length short and maintain the proper operation and manipulation of the electrode and don't use an excessive uh, welding current eh. cleaning inside of the nozzle should be carried out occasionally ha, ni antara common-common uh, way eh, 
uh, yang kita boleh gunakan untuk kita prevent uh, porosity or suppress and the occurrence of uh, porosity. Okay. <coughs> So kalau kita tengok uh, instead of porosity daripada apa nama ni uh, sebab sebab kalau kita tengok macam uh, dalam gambar sebelum ni saya tunjukkan uh, porosity tu sendiri dia ada banyak jenis eh uh, one of it is a blow hole eh, yang terhasil daripada uh, tindak balas uh, hydrogen dengan aluminium alloy uh, so benda macam ni kita boleh elakkan dengan cara kita decrease moisture rust in welding material eh Uh, kita apa uh, control moisture eh, dan juga apa kita bersihkan kesan-kesan uh, karat lah eh, uh, pada workpiece eh, sebelum kita mulakan proses welding and then reaction uh, between CO2 gas and steel also uh, akan hasilkan blow hole okay so to control it we have to uh, uh, entry into Uh, enter an air eh, into shielding gas uh, stable flow uh, with a appropriate uh, gas flow rate lah ok uh, so so kita nak 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 apa nama ni elakkan ni lah cara dia antara salah satu cara lain ni lah kita avoid eh, excessive uh, excessive long out uh, length ok <coughs> And then another type of defect eh, uh, except crack, uh, apa lagi kita dah tengok tadi, uh, porosity, okay, uh, there uh, another type of defect that we call slag inclusion. Okay, uh, slag may be caught in uh, in the weld metal or between passes due to poor operation on the part of the welder or insufficient cleaning of the groove or removal of slag. Okay. So, to prevent this, we should uh, remove slag completely, okay, before the next pass is welded, okay. And then prevent a preceding slag. And also when a previous pass uh, make a sharp V-shape, so-called valley at the bottom of the groove, uh, grind, grinding uh, method must be applied to make uh, the groove U-shape. Yang ni, uh, method backgogging yang kita pernah uh, belajar sebelum ni lah. And then um, correct and steady operation of electrode is needed. Okay, uh, in the case of MAG welding with short arc technique, eh, slag from the previous pass must be removed completely eh, before we start another pass. Okay. So another type of uh, weld defect is a uh, lack of uh, fusion. Okay, ataupun pencampuran. Eh. Fusion ni pencampuran, pencampuran yang tidak sempurna. Eh. Uh, kita tengok uh, lack of fusion or incomplete fusion ni perkara yang sama lah. Uh, biasa kita boleh nampak di permukaan ataupun uh, di bahagian dalam eh. Uh, the side wall of a groove or previous well bed may not fuse together due to improper preparation of the well groove eh. Insufficient heat input uh, also uh, be a factor of uh, uh, the occurrence of lack of fusion or poor operation or manipulation of arc. So kita tengok dia tak tak sempurna lah. Eh, incomplete fusion. So to prevent eh, the lack of fusion or incomplete fusion, eh, heat input should be sufficient and eh, the well groove should be clean and made smooth eh, before uh, we undergo the process. Okay. The shape of the groove should not be too narrow. Okay. Uh, in the case of gas shielded arc welding, okay, uh, remove slag on the bed surface and eh, avoid, avoid excessive wave, waving, eh, avoid too small a bevel angle, eh, bevel angle with, with a very small size lah maksudnya. And maintain a good arc position is uh, quite helpful eh, in avoiding lack of fusion. Okay, and the last one is uh, to remove and modify the valley shape before the subsequent pass welding. Okay, so this is among the uh, methods eh, uh, that uh, need to be looked into if you uh, wish to avoid eh, or suppress the amount of lack of fusion. Okay, so another type yang uh, well, uh, well defect yang hampir sama lack of fusion ni tadi adalah incomplete penetration. Okay, 
uh, this is due to an insufficient heat input or poor operation at the bottom uh, at the bottom of groove or root face may not fuse together okay dia, dia macam well tak habis lah uh, kalau kita tengok uh, contohnya dalam bulatan merah ni okay. uh, <coughs> so how to reduce incomplete penetration uh, we should look into the heat input uh, is it sufficient or not and then uh, we shall look into the well groove eh? uh, because the design should be correct okay back gogging and, and also the arc should uh, trace a proper position eh, in the groove uh, during uh, welding okay so semua ni uh, antara uh, langkah yang kita boleh ambil lah eh untuk kita reduce uh, incomplete penetration okay so another type uh, beside all the, the previously discussed defect is uh, undercut. Uh, undercut ni biasa berlaku di apa antara uh, base metal dan juga fusion zone lah di mana uh, akan ada uh, kalau kita tengok bahasa mudah saya nak terangkan uh, terhakis lah di sini. Bukan terhakis macam corrosion tu. Dia sebenarnya uh, disebabkan uh, masalah yang melibatkan um, uh, heat input lah biasanya. Eh, So, uh, let's see this. Sharp or deep undercut significantly lower the fatigue strength of a well joint. Okay. So, kenapa fat kita katakan sebagai fatigue strength, uh, dia akan lower down uh, fatigue strength. Disebabkan undercut ni, akan bertindak sebagai crack tip. Ah di situlah akan bermulanya a uh, crack propagation. Okey dia akan bermula dengan crack tip dan kita kenakan cyclic loading lagi a uh, uh, crack tip tu akan propagate pada satu uh, keadaan tertentu. Okey. So to avoid them eh, we should uh, prop, uh, properly uh, choose eh, the welding current eh uh, and then a uh, correct and steady operation of electrode uh, should be maintained okay proper welding speed should be maintained eh? a proper choice of electrode okay uh, weaving operation should be proper okay the welding position or application of a positioner should be considered as well okay in the case of one-sided welding the shape of root area and welding condition or the root pass should be carefully controlled so kalau kita tengok semua melibatkan uh, macam mana kita control operasi welding tu sendiri in order for us to avoid the undercut. Okay. So uh, this is example of how okay uh, undercut could affect the stress concentration. Uh, kalau stress concentration tinggi di situ, situlah uh, uh, tendency untuk uh, berlakunya uh, crack formation, eh? crack initiation and after that crack will propagate and uh, lead to the uh, failure of the welded component. Okay, so uh, ni antara apa nama contoh-contoh lah eh? uh, kalau kita tengok sini point out the harmful effect of uh, the butt joint misalignment eh? on the uh, joint strength and ni cara-cara untuk untuk uh, bagi kes yang melibatkan uh, misalignment lah eh uh, so uh, itu yang uh, common defect eh common defect yang berlaku dalam uh, secara general dalam semua jenis uh, logam ataupun metal lah eh so uh, as i briefly uh, explained to you previously we are going to look into uh, the defect in austenitic steel kenapa saya cerita tadi dah bagi tahu austenitic steel ni unik uh, sifat dia okey dia tak macam steel lain dia non magnetic okey daripada sudut uh, uh, apa nama ni uh, susunan uh, kita panggil apa susunan atom dia pun berbeza eh? dia dia defined by a uh, face centric cubic eh, fcc uh, as compared to the uh, uh, bcc grain structure okay uh, so tu beza dia dia disebabkan grain structure dia berbeza itu uh, dan chemical composition dia pun berbeza itu menyebabkan sifat dia lebih unik 
Ha, dan dia ada kelemahan-kelemahan dia sendiri ha, Dan antara kelemahannya dia cepat berlaku hot crack lah Kalau kita uh, welding dia eh? So in case of uh, austenitic stainless steel uh, Crack in the HAZ or heat affectance zone uh, May occur in addition to crack in the weld metal uh, Such as crater crack, longitudinal crack, transverse crack or micro crack Ni yang biasa occur tapi kalau dalam austenitic steel ni dia ada lagi crack dalam uh, HAZ eh. So 5 to 10% ferrite eh, in well metal is said to be effective in preventing crack in well metal Yang ni masa kita alloy kan dia lah eh. uh, So so austenitic steel ni dia ada range alloy dia eh. Jadi kita control dia punya uh, chemical composition ni uh, In order to prevent eh, uh, crack eh, during welding process Okay eh. And then excessive uh, ferrite cause deterioration of anti-corrosive uh, properties and may be cause uh, uh, sigma uh, phase embrittlement. Okay. So kalau kita nak tambah uh, ferrite ni lebih daripada apa nama uh, apa nama ni percentage ni uh, akan berlaku masalah yang ni pula. Uh, eh. Uh, dia akan berlaku masalah uh, apa daripada segi uh, apa nama ni uh, sifat anti korosif tu semakin lemah lah uh, and then phase embrittlement juga uh, berubah eh. uh, itu yang yang uh, agak sensitif sikit dia this type of stainless steel okay uh, so another way is uh, grain boundary precipitation of uh, chrom chromium carbide okay Uh, the HAZ of austenitic stainless steel uh, when heated to uh, 500 degrees to 800 uh, plus degrees eh, may, may uh, precipitate uh, chromium carbide at the grain boundary so called sen sensitization okay so sensitization of HAZ of austen uh, austenitic steel ni uh, ni lah uh, apa nama ni proses dia okay uh, so ni uh, Okay, so when this material is exposed to corrosive atmosphere, eh, intergranular corrosion called well decay may occur. Eh, a solid solution, heat treatment after welding, use uh, of low carbon steel or use of stabilized austenitic stainless steel can present, prevent well decay. Uh, so kita tengok green boundary precipitation of chromium carbide ni tadi, dia akan affect uh, what we call... Uh, Uh, well decay eh, kalau material ni expose kepada corrosive atmosphere ok uh, so uh, antara cara kita nak elak ni lah uh, use of low carbon steel use of stabilized austenitic steel ok uh, so itu antara cara dia uh, So ini untuk case apabila uh, kita stabilize eh uh, the HAZ uh, sorry uh, when the HAZ of stabilized austenitic steel okay is heated more than uh, 1000 degrees Celsius and used at high temperature eh, between 600 to 650 in a corrosive atmosphere a knife line attack eh, instead of well decay tadi uh, may occur okay uh, stabilizing heat treatment in which it is heated between uh, 850 degree to uh, 930 degree celsius okay after welding uh, can prevent this lah okay so untuk kita prevent perkara ni dia melibatkan uh, heat treatment lah okay uh, 